This might be the most important tool in mathematics. Euler's formula simplifies our life. In a world that's governed by sines and cosines, it makes sense to turn into that e to the ix. It makes rotations around the coordinate plane smooth. In signal processing, we use it to convert sines and cosines into exponentials, making frequency analysis cleaner and more powerful. In quantum mechanics, you find it in Schrodinger's equation. And let's not forget that it makes differential equations easier to solve. As a mathematician, you need to learn how to navigate around this tool. And in this video, I will show you how to use it in two very basic integrals you see in a calculus class. You ready? Let's get started. Okay, so here's the deal. This is the Euler formula. We have e to the i x is equal to cosine plus i sine x. Now notice that we have a real part in the cosine and we have the imaginary part in the sine. So one of the cool things with the Euler formula is we can go ahead and call for the real part. I'm gonna go ahead and put R E, that's just gonna stand for the real. So if I call for the real part of this particular function, it's gonna be cosine of x. And also I can say, you know what? I'm gonna call for the imaginary part of e to the i x, and that's just gonna be sine of x. That's one of the cool things about the Euler formula is that we can just use the real part or the imaginary part. So let's just say, for example, that now we want to solve the integral e to the x cosine of x dx. Now, I know that you can totally use uh, integration by parts. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But I'm going to show you a cool trick that we can use so that we can sort of understand how the Euler formula works. So check this out. Well, I want the cosine. All right. So how about instead of doing this, I say I want to find the integral of the real part times e to the x times e to the i x. And that's what that's going to equal to is we have e to the x times this entire thing. So when I'm multiplying it and I'm only calling for the real part, it's actually equal to this integral up on top. OK. Again, think about what I just did. You can sort of work this out and I actually encourage you to write this down on your own so that you can see how this is equal to the integral up on top. Okay, now let's go ahead and combine these things. This is what makes Euler formula so powerful is because we can combine these using properties of exponents. Now I'm gonna have the integral of e to the i or one plus i to the power of x with respect to x. So again, all I did was properties of exponents because they have the same base. I can add these together and I actually factored out an x so that I can have this nice one plus i x. Now, don't be scared. One plus i, that, the i is simply just a complex number. There's nothing wrong with that. It is a number. In fact, I mean, that's just what it is. A lot of times, you know, we think of it as imaginary numbers as something super scary, but it's just a number. That's all it is. So let's go ahead and integrate this. And one thing I forgot is that I did not write the real part. I think it's important for me to keep that going because otherwise some people might forget that I'm actually doing that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and integrate the real part. I'm gonna go ahead and start putting my solution on here. And all we're simply doing is, an, I mean, uh, a simple integration that we've done many times. I mean, I'm just using, if you think about it, I'm using like u substitution, but hopefully you agree that this is equal to the real part of one over one plus i e to the one plus i x and then plus your cheese, okay? Think about it, what I just did. If this was like e to the 2x, then the integral of that is just one half e to the 2x. That's all I'm doing here. This is one plus i x. When I take the integral of that, all I'm getting is one over one plus i e to the one plus i x. Okay, so how do we start simplifying this? Well, let's talk about the one over one plus i. If you remember from algebra class, I would say, we can simplify this by just multiplying the top and bottom by the conjugate. So I'm multiplying the top by one minus i, and I'm doing the same thing on the bottom, one minus i. What is that gonna give us? I'm gonna have the real part of, and I'm gonna have one minus i on the top, and on the bottom here, this will become one minus i squared. In other words, i squared is negative one, so we have one minus negative one, one plus one, so we just really have two. And now, let's go ahead and start simplifying this. I'm gonna have e to the, and I'm just gonna rewrite this actually as e to the x, e to the i x. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start reintroducing this or just rewriting this because I'm ready to only uh, find the real parts and not the imaginary. Okay, so let's go ahead and move this up here. Let's talk about the one minus i over two. If you bear with me here, this will become one half minus one half i e to the x 
e to the i x, and then we still have our plus cheese, okay? It's a little confusing here. I mean, there's a lot of moving parts, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna distribute the e to the x, e to the i x to both of these terms. Now, what would that give me? I still have the real part of one half e to the x, e to the i x, minus one half i, e to the x, e to the i x, plus your cheese. All right, not bad, not bad. And we're almost done. Bear with me here. I have e to the i x, so I'm gonna go ahead and start reintroducing this entire thing over here. So this will give me the real part of one half e to the x cosine x plus one half e to the x i sine x. So what this became is I have one half e to the x and I distributed that to the e to the i x, which was up here. Okay, so I have one half e to the x cosine x plus one half e to the x i sine x. And I still have this negative part here. There's an i right here. So this will become negative one half i e to the x cosine x, uh, and I hope it fits, negative one half i e to the x i sine x plus cheese. Okay, I'm hoping that that fits on the screen there, and it looks like it does. I realize that the lighting here is not the best, so I apologize. Hopefully though, you're liking or you're enjoying this longer form content. Okay, so now let's go ahead and sort of just combine things with the, the real parts and the imaginaries here. So I know that I have a real part here. This is one half e to the x cosine of x. I have an imaginary part here because I have an i. I have an imaginary part here because I have an i. Technically, I have an imaginary part here, but this is something you gotta be very careful with. You have an i and an i here. So when you multiply this together, those are i squared, and i squared is equal to negative one, so this will turn into a positive. So I actually do have a, another real part, one half e to the x sine x, and now I can combine these two values together, and I have um, one half e to the x i sine x minus one half i e to the x cosine x and then I still have the plus cheese. I'm sorry about that. I wish I'm gonna be much better with my writing here so that I, everything fits on here. Okay, final step. Remember, we're trying to integrate e to the x cosine x, and I said by doing that, we're gonna integrate the real part of this particular function right here. Well, all I have to do is now that I'm finished, all I'm doing is gonna, I'm, I'm gonna grab the real parts, and it's gonna be these portions right here. So that's gonna tell me that the integral of e to the x cosine x is equal to the real part of this solution here, and that's gonna be one half e to the x cosine x plus one half e to the x sine x plus your cheese, and you are finished by finding the integral of e to the x cosine x using the Euler formula. Okay, so let's go ahead and erase this and talk about how we're gonna solve e to the x sine x. Okay, so we knew that if we take the imaginary part of e to the i x, that's gonna give us sine of x. So if we wanted to solve for the integral e to the x sine x, then all we have to do is call for the imaginary part of e to the x, e to the i x. We essentially solved this particular integral right here, and this is the solution. This is a solution that we had in the previous steps. But instead of calling for the real part, we're actually gonna call for the imaginary part, and that's gonna be these solutions right here. So at the end, we're gonna say that our solution for e to the x sine of x is gonna be the real parts of this. So it's gonna be one half e to the x sine x minus one half e to the x cosine x plus your cheese, and we have solved the integral of e to the x sine x using Euler's formula once again. Anyway, that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed this format. I'm gonna try to post one video like this per week. So if you feel like you enjoyed this, let me know in the comments, or if you feel like there's something else that you want us to cover, let me know in the comments as well, and I'll see you soon.